Hello, it's Tom from Black Toast Studio, and here is my 2,000 points of Black Templars. So in front of you we have a battalion detachment, and as we go in here we'll start off with the HQs as usual. So we have Helbrit uh, leading the forces, the Warlord. Uh, he has the frontline commander Warlord trait, and he's obviously just stock, and then to the left of him we have the Emperor's Champion, uh, he's obviously stock as well. And then finally, over here on the right hand side, we have a Primaris bike chaplain. And he, yeah, he has 10 houses bones as one of the relics on him. And also he's been upgraded to a Master of Sanctity. And he is also carrying um, Fires of Devotion and Divine Protection as his two litanies. Now, as we go on into the rest of the battalion over here, we have uh, in the troop section, we have Four, four troop choices. Uh, we have one normal intercessor squad over here, and then we have uh, three assault intercessor squads. Um, the only difference is here is that the one at the back over here, the sergeant is carrying a thunder hammer as opposed to a chainsaw and bolt pistol. The rest are all armed with bolt pistol and chainsaw. It's fairly standard there. And then we'll shift on into some elite choices. And um, we have here uh, a squad of blade guard veterans. The Sword Brother has been given the Neo Volkite pistol, and also um, I've given him Champion of the Feast and the Crux Obsidian. Uh, Crux Obsidian means that he always has minus one damage when it's allocated to him, so hopefully that'll come in handy. Uh, also in Elites, we have the Mighty Redemptor Dreadnought here, uh, hoping to uh, take on the uh, Xenos shortly. Um, he is the macro, has a macro plasma cannon, the Storm Bolters, uh, Icarus. Uh, assault pod and also the chain gun underslung on his other arm. Uh, the final elite choice is the Vanguard of veterans here. Um, we have two with shields and chain swords, the rest with uh, shields, uh, sorry, rest with uh, pistols and sh uh, swords I should say, and then the sergeant as you can see is carrying a nice relic blade just to give him a little extra hit in combat. Uh, that is the elite done. Uh, and then as we move on into fast attack over here, we have two fast attack squads. We have on the right here a squad of outriders, all pretty standard, nothing, no upgrades on them. Not that you can take many upgrades on them, to be honest. And then to the left, then we have a, a, a bike squad, and the sergeant in that squad has been given a power fist, and also we have given it an attack bike upgrade here, which is carrying a multi melter. And then finally, as we move on into the heavy support section, we have two squads of eradicators, uh, three in each, all with the assault melter rifles. Nothing else upgraded on them at all. And then finally, we also have a dedicated transport of an um, Impulsor. So that concludes my 2,000 points of Black Templars. Let's see what Dom has bought for his Necrons. Right, this is Dom from Black Dead Studios, and this is my 2,000 points of Necrons. So I have gone with a battalion. Uh, we are going to be playing with the Mephit Dynasty, which is going to be a lot of fun. So starting at the front here, we have got the Overlord, who is the Warlord of the army. Okay. Uh, he has got Enduring Will as his Warlord traits, uh, so that essentially reduces damage coming into him, which is hopefully going to be quite helpful. Uh, we've got the Arrow of Infinity as his uh, relic, so that's an upgraded Tachyon Arrow. Uh, next to him, we have on the right, we have got two squads of five... Uh, Tesla Immortals uh, behind them, we've got squad of 10. And then next to them, on the left, we've got two more squads of 10. Ah. Over <laughs> on the left-hand side, we have got one squad of six Scarabs. Behind those, we've got two Annihilation Barges there. Um, they have got the uh, te uh, Tesla Cannon uh, underneath, instead of the, uh, the Gauss option. Over behind them, we have got our first squad of Scorpec Destroyers. Um, next to them, we have a, a cheeky little lord just <laughs> lurking in there. He's got the Veil of Darkness with his second relic there. So we have paid a command point for a second relic. So he's got the Veil of Darkness and uh, a war sign. Next to them, we have got the uh, Locust Heavy Destroyers. Uh, they have got the Gauss Destructors, because why wouldn't you take those? Um, next to him, next to them, we have got a Technomancer uh, with a Knoptic Cloak and a Hypermaterial uh, Ablator, uh, which essentially can uh, give that unit's benefit of cover. 
Uh, and next to them, we've got our second squad of school pick destroyers. Because, you know, they're, they're a good thing to have. And then finally, we have got two flyers. We have got two night sides. We've got one there, and then we've got another one. Scooting over this way. Scooting over. We've got another night side there. Hooray! And so ending the army there, we have got 11 command points. Okay, so for this battle report at 2,000 points, we are playing an open war mission, and we have decided to do this set of missions right here. So we have the deployment, which is this kind of triangular pointed edges at each end, long edge of the board. Uh, the twist is blackout, so all weapons on the board have been reduced to 18 inch range. That should be interesting for both of us, I think. And then storm their lines, which is basically three objectives in each of our own deployment zones. Uh, when scoring, uh, which I think is at the end of, uh, let me just double check, at the end of each of our turns, so each of our player turns, not battle rounds, um, the ones in your own deployment area are worth one point, the ones in the enemy's deployment area are worth two points. Simple as that, no, nothing too complex outside of that. Uh, and here we go. So this is how the armies have deployed. On this end of the board, we have the Templars. So over here, we have the bike squadrons at the back with the bike chaplain. And into the middle of the board, we have the Dreadnoughts with a, a squad of assault incestors and eradicators. In the ruins under here, uh, we have a, a squad of standard incestors holding that objective in the middle there. And there's also another objective over here, which this squad, two squads of assault incestors and the eradicators are huddled around. And then just around this corner, we have the Impulsor, which has Hellbrecht, Empress Champion, and the Blade Guard veterans in it, um, also just uh, ready to move forward. And then as I swing over here, the other objective marker is also just down there with the Dreadnought and that squad down there. As we swing over to this side of the board, the Xeno Necron side of the board, we have another objective here, which has been currently tended by a squad of Scarabs. <laughs> and a barge is just hanging out here with them as well. And you can actually remind me, these immortals, Dom? Yep, immortals. They are immortals, good. Lots of immortals so, everywhere. So we have some immortals here with another barge just up behind them. More immortals uh, with the destroyers backing them up, and they are currently sitting on an objective down there as well. Uh, and then two of the HQ units are backing them up. Another squad of immortals currently behind these crates. The two sides have just taken up position on this side of the board. And then another lord sitting just at the edge of those ruins there. The last objective over here. Yeah. Uh, mortals and the last objective, as Dom said, is just down here. And just before we roll off the first turn, just a couple of things to note. The score pet destroyers are both in reserve. And in my reserves, I have my Vanguard veterans also, because you haven't seen them on the board. Helbrecht and the Blagar veterans are inside the Impulsor with the Emperor's Champion. However, let's see in this game who's going first. So here's mine. Uh, oh, six. Okay, maybe I want you to go first. Maybe you do. A one. A one. Go. I think you definitely want me to go first. Yeah, no, you're falling well, for it. Well, we'll be right back in a minute with the Black Templars, turn one. Okay, Templars, turn one. We have finished the movement phase. Fairly simple one. Uh, basically, everything that could advance has advanced. So over here, this squad of incestors, the Eradicators, and the Impulse are all advanced up this side of the table, heading down that way. Uh, no guns in range, though. And that's a pretty similar story over here. I did also advance with the bikes, which you can see have made a pretty hefty move up this side of the table, moving 20 inches, because the turbo boost will allow us for that. Um, the chaplain did also get off divine protection and fires of devotion onto the um, outrider squad. So they've got an extra attack and they're five vulnerable. Uh, the redemptor dreadnought also advanced, along with the eradicators advancing as well. And unfortunately, uh, rather boringly, that is actually going to be the end of my turn because nothing is in range of gunfire due to the blackout rule, which is 18 inch weapons. So we're going to be heading hastily on to Necrons, turn one. Woohoo! So, turn one movement for the Necrons. Uh, these two annihilation barges have moved up. They are in range of firing on the Outriders over there. Uh, luckily, because of Mephrit as well, we're going to, uh, the AP is going to be beneficial for these guys mm -hmm. over here. Um, but predicting a counter charge, because we're probably going to kill one, they've just got just moved around a little bit, just get away from them. Scarabs just kind of f f moving around a little bit, preventing any vanguard veterans that may possibly come in. <laughs> um, my will um, has been put on to the heavy destroyers here, so we're, they're now hitting on a twos, and they've got a basic reroll of ones uh -huh. anyway. Um, they're also benefiting, benefiting from light cover because of the Technomancy's um, uh, war gear. Very nice. 
Um, the Lord's Will has been put onto these guys over okay. here, yeah. so they have got a plus, uh, they've got re-rolls of one, which will hopefully be quite handy, because we're really going to focus fire on this. There's a lot of good things in here. So that's the Impulsor there. The Impulsor, yeah. And the two Night Sives here, just moving up on this flank, and they're going to be putting some Tesla shots down here as well. Very nice. So Tesla and um, horrible big weapons going in. I'm actually quite worried. <clears throat> I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping <laughs> it's going to work. We'll see. And that's, is that everything? That is everything for my movement. We'll be right back in a minute with the results of the shooting. Right, so turn one shooting. We started off with the heavy destroyers back here. Just down here, sorry. Firing off into the Impulsor. I think we did like 12, 13 wounds in the end. So you did, you enough. enough. Yes. Um, one of the Blade Guards uh, died when they were emergency disembarking. Uh, and then what followed was volleys of Tesla fire. We had the squad back here firing four shots off. And we had this squad here as well, which then wiped the remaining blade guard out. Mm. They have fallen. Um, so most of the stuff was out of range. However, we had the night sides here. So this one night scythe fired shots into the uh, the squad back here. The eradicators, yeah. The eradicators, you used transhuman. Transhuman and unyielding in the face of the foe. So. Yeah, yeah. So it was yeah, plus one save and with transhuman as well. We did one wound yeah. to these guys here. Uh, we did do uh, malevolent arcing, which was quite nice. Um, it didn't really pay off, but it's <laughs> no. quite a nice little thing to do. Put a bit of fret around. So essentially that put out mortal wounds on a roll of a four plus. Didn't happen though, unfortunately. No. The other night scythe, after seeing transhuman go off on these, decided to fire off into this squad here. Uh, dealing five wounds, removing two and putting this poor little guy on one wound there. Indeed. So quite good on this flank, I no, think. No, I disagree. It was not good <laughs> for me. Hellbrick's <laughs> going to have to ha walk his way across now. Yeah, he's, he's, his feet are ready. Uh, and he's swinging over here. <laughs> over here, we are not so successful. Uh, we have both the barges here firing down this avenue here. Uh, you had a minus one to hit. I was hoping I hit skilled riders on. So. Skilled riders on there, which kind of paid off. Uh, a lot of failed roles, unfortunately. Yeah. We did use talent for annihilation on one of the uh, annihilation barges uh, and took two wounds off of three, three. actually. Three, three wounds, yeah. Yeah, wounds yet, yeah, so. yeah. And then, yeah, so it didn't really pay off. However, we did well on the left flank, the right flank, not so well. But that's it, turn one, good stuff. So we'll be right back in a minute with turn two for the Black Templars. Okay, Templars, turn two. And on this side, we had the chaplain get off uh, uh, fires of devotion onto the bikers, but didn't get divine protection off. I also used bombastic delivery stratagem to get litany of hate off, so it's where you're to hit in combat over there. Other than that, all the bikes charged up this left-hand side, trying to get as many guns to bear onto the two barges. Into the center of the table, we had the Eradicators advance uh, up behind the Dreadnought, which did not advance, so he can fire his guns. That's it, all in range of this squad over here, so hopefully uh, they'll do some damage to them. And then as we swing over to this side of the table, we had uh, all the Incessor squads on the back line have stayed put because obviously they're scoring points at the moment. However, as we go to the centre here, Helbrecht, who's pretty angry about his transport being blown up, has just moved forward towards the lines here. He's got a lot of guns to get through, but we'll see how he does. Um... <laughs> It's all going to work out I well. suspect pain, but we shall see. Empress Champion has also moved up with the Incestor squad. No advances there, so they're all ready to do a charge if possible. Um, he also, before uh, in the command phase, he put his rerolls to hit onto the Eradicator squad back here, just so they can hopefully take one of these nice little scythes down. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, but that's it, really. So that is all of the movement. We'll now head on into the shooting phase for the Black Templars in turn two. Okay, at the end of the shooting phase for Black Templars in turn two, over here, all of the bikes, uh, so the melters, the bolters, everything fired into both the barges down here. Uh, the first volley actually did take out the left-hand barge. That was mainly the melter that did the work there, though. Um, so that was the positive side. And in the centre, or one of the centre channels down here, we had the uh, Immortals take five wounds, or five damage, so they lost five. 
from the Eradicators over here and the Redemptor Dreadnought. Um, pretty good there, but you did some pretty good get up rolls actually. Yeah, we got some good reanimation. Yeah, um, over on this side, a slightly different story. Uh, as we sweep over to where the Eradicators were firing up at the uh, croissant here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I double fired into it. Um, lots of uh, misses, really. Yeah, you did four damage. Four damage to it, even though I gave Helbert put the uh, command on them for rerolling to hit. So yeah. pretty poor. Not, not good. Uh, Helbert then took a lucky shot with his melter gun, firing all the way over into the um, uh, what destroyers. Was destroyers over here, um, and managed to take a wound off. Yeah, it was really impressive. <laughs> and then some pistols fired and did nothing. Yeah. So pretty. Yeah. This. Uh, so, kind of the opposite for me, Dom. The left-hand side for me was fairly successful. The right-hand side for me was very bad. <laughs> um, so, we're going to—we've definitely got uh, some attempts at some assaults here. Uh, uh, boo. Boo. <laughs> so, we'll be right back in a minute uh, with Templars. Turn to assault. Okay, so at the end of the assault phase in turn two for the Black Templars, I'm going to start with the positive side of the board over here. We did a wound to annihilation barge. Hey! Now we're going to go for the slightly more depressing news over here. So um, we have over here Helbrecht, the Emperor's Champion, and uh, an Assault Intercessor with a Thunderhammer who charged the Immortals there. How many do you think they killed, guys? I can probably work it out. Yeah. Were We're going to go with two. Yeah. <laughs> two. Uh, it was probably some of the worst rolling I've ever done uh, in a long while. So uh, How we laughed. Yeah, we, we did laugh. And then, uh, you know, and then Don didn't even, he was so unimpressed with it, he didn't even use his Resurrection Orb. No. So yeah, I won't be using that. Don't <laughs> we'll see what happens further on. That was all the combat because nothing else was in range. So that concludes turn two for the uh, Templars. So let's see what happens in turn two for the Necrons. Right. So starting, well, not starting turn two movement, but in turn two movement, the Knight Side swung around here. He's used. Uh, we've used a stratagem, prismat uh, prismatic dimensional breach which essentially brings these out of strategic reserve um, within three inches of there. Uh, we moved and we've been out of engagement range. So these guys are now going to position themselves to go for this. No. Yes. No. The other night side um, <laughs> has now moved over. He's just going to do like a, a strafing run down here. Um, moving over here, we then have the Immortals, probably eager to see the uh, night side and now moving up the street now, seeing what happens. Very nice. Um, over here, the Immortals, bold by um, uh, Helbrick's inability to kill anyone, <laughs> yeah. have just remained in combat, because yeah. why not? Oh, well. The Lord's will has I'm, been put on them. I'm kind of convinced they're going to be all right. Yeah, they're going to be fine. <laughs> they, they can still re-roll ones. Uh, my will be down has been done on these heavy destroyers, which have got a nice bead down onto the Dreadnoughts. Um, and once again, these guys are going to benefit from cover because of the war gear ability. Yeah. Uh, everyone else has kind of remained stationary back here. And I think that's pretty much it for movement. Indeed. So let's see what we Although, can do. Know, but did you mention the night side? Yeah, this you did. You up. Did. Yeah, so, um, so cool. living metal's keeping everyone in the game still. So that is an end of movement for uh, the Necrons. Let's have a look at how they do in their shooting phase. So, shooting, turn two. Um, <laughs> over here, the Annihilation Barge just shot at the Outriders that sit in combat, and minus one to here. It, it did a bit more damage. Mm -hmm. It killed off one of the bikes um, that was already wounded, and then took on another there. one down to two wings there. So he's kind of limited it. But with uh, Living Metal, hopefully he's going to be all right. Um, over here, this night side did a bit of strafing run down here, but only caused... Uh, take this one down to one wing. One wing, yeah. Uh, use skillful riders, wasn't it? Indeed, yes. Yeah, so that kept that going there. Um, over here, we had the knight side here. Just do a bit of a shoot back behind him, just to take out a bit of the threat of the eradicators. Over here, sorry, yeah. Yeah, and one of the eradicators fell there. We had the locust heavy destroyers firing off into this dreadnought. I took it down to two wounds. Uh, one couldn't see, so we only had two of the destroyers fire. If all three could have seen, that definitely would have gone. gone. You, you yeah. fired a few extra shots into it from your immortals as well. Didn't yeah, you? yeah, so a couple of these immortals in front took another wound off. Wound off yeah. yeah, so they've done their bit, and that was it. So we've done a little bit, little bit of damage. Yes. Let's see what we can do in combat. So combat is definitely happening. Yes. We'll back in a second with turn two combat for the Necrons. Right, so starting turn two combat, these guys charged in, loads of attacks, loads of damage. <laughs> Um, but then Tom rolled a lot of five up saves, <laughs> five up in buns, yeah. and we only killed one off. Uh, in the fight back part, uh, we did whirling onslaught, I think the stratagem is for one command point. Yeah. Uh, so I made it a little bit tougher to wound these guys, and they, they took one wound back after a lot of attacks. Uh, moving over here, we've still got the annihilation barge. 
took two more wounds, but is still hanging on there. We've paid one more command point just it with quantum shielding to increase it to a four up. Didn't come into any effect, but it's it's still in the game. That's the main thing. Oh no. And then over here, Hellbrick, chapter master of the Black Templars, the Emperor's Champion, and this guy <laughs> killed off uh, six six, yeah. six of the immortals. However, the immortals still hold. They are still there uh, holding this squad up because he can't fall back. He's got to hack his way through. Um, so that is it. We didn't. It didn't really go to plan, unfortunately. But it wasn't that bad. It, it wasn't. Could, too it bad. could have been a bit worse. It could have been worse. They, they could have been out of combat, which would have made the next turn a little bit more painful for you. I exactly. Suspect. But exactly. As it stands, that's it. It's not too bad. It's still hey. a draw at the moment. Moving into. Although uh, we do have pistols. You do have pistols. Oh, that might work. <laughs> I know it might work. <laughs> So anyway, that's the end of turn uh, two for the Necrons. We'll be right back with turn three for the Black Templars. Okay, turn three for the Black Templars, end of movement phase. Down here we had the Vanguard veterans drop back here to hopefully assist uh, with the killing of these Scorpet destroyers because they're quite annoying, if I'm telling you honest, Dom. Sorry. Well, um, your luck's not going to last forever. <laughs> uh, this bike squad has shot back around this way. Uh, this is actually mainly so that the metal gun's potentially in range of this uh, night side here because I don't really want it or doom side. Sorry, is it doom side? No, no not it is night side. Yeah, yeah, I got right. it right. Got it right. Um, uh, obviously, over here, these guys are still in combat. I did get um, Litany of Divine Protection and Fires of Devotion off, so if they do somehow make it out um, and get a charge on another unit, they will get an extra attack. As we. Oh, yeah, sorry, just underneath here, the. Um, Eradicators have made a move that way because they're now in range of the three destroyers over there, as are uh, the squad that moved over here. However, uh, as I was saying to Dom, they haven't really had a lot of luck with these guys. Um, I am going to attempt to get two pistol shots off into here because if I kill one of them, um, maybe Dom might relieve the one <laughs> on the right hand side. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that Helbert can then assault another unit. Uh, you're a victim of your own zealous <laughs> behaviour. <laughs> um, anyway, that is actually. Um, the end of, oh sorry, also this side, I just, just did forget the Dreadnought has just shot down here. I say shot down, he moved four inches that way towards the uh, Immortals. Because uh, both me and Dom are very, still even on victory points as you've probably seen from the scores. Because uh, we, we're just scoring three points each every turn at the moment. So, um, six points each. Six points each, sorry. Uh, so, yeah, say three, say oh, yeah, one okay, each, so yeah. six, we're six apiece at the moment, uh, three yeah. points a turn though. Uh, so that is the end of the movement phase, let's head on into the shooting. Turn three shooting for the Templars, and over here, as you can see, there are some missing destroyers. Uh, that was actually from the uh, two, uh, sorry, the two eradicators down here that fired into them, made it managed to take out two. Um, I did also fire all three of these eradicators into the missing night side, I managed to kill it off fairly easily. Uh, outside of that, uh, there was a, a few shots fired in this area. Uh, into the Immortals, taking them down to two. That was basically from the Dreadnoughts and the Bikers back here all firing in. Did a fairly good job on that. Um, and then also, if we slip back onto this end of the board again, down here, uh, we did fire the pistols into the Scorpet Destroyers and we took one out and left one on two wounds. Ooh. So that was fairly uh, fairly successful shooting, I think. So um, that is the end of shooting. We're now going to head on to the combat phase. Turn three, Assault for the Black Templars, and down here we had the Scorpex versus the Assaultists again, and it ended up uh, with uh, Dom killing two and me taking two wounds off one of them. Mm -hmm. So fairly even Stevens, in, I think, in the grand scheme of things there. I feel I came off better somehow. Um, <laughs> uh, moving over to the centre of the board down here, the Dreadnought, who made its charge with Immortals, managed to kill one Immortal. Fair enough. <laughs> down here... This bloody Annihilation Barge will not go down. He has now got one wound remaining, which I'm sure he's about to get back in a second. <laughs> so uh, that was the chaplain. Unfortunately, the two Outriders did not do enough damage to increase uh, the deficit there. And as we scoot over to this other table, one positive thing is we did finally finish off that squad of mortals, which we've been in since round two. Um, however, it has left them rather open to uh, all of this that's going to fire in the next turn. So Helbert's pretty good at weathering storms, uh, and hopefully he can put his hands in front of his face and that'll deflect all the shots. It's gonna be awkward. Uh, but we'll see, you know, he's, he's, he's brave. Brave and foolish. <laughs> 
Uh, but that is actually pretty much it because unfortunately back here, I did also fail my charge with the Vanguard veterans, which I think probably might have just tipped that combat in my favor, annoyingly. Uh, Dom actually has another squad of them to come down as well. Um, I presume you can come out here again. Yeah, you can play the stratagem uh, in the yes. next turn. So, bring about that again. So that is the end of turn three for the Black Tempers. It's now time for turn three for Necrons. There we go. So in the movement phase here, these guys, the, the uh, Knights I've zoomed past and unloaded another squad of Scorpec Destroyers here. Their aim is to get on this objective and claim it yes. for the dynasty. They won't. They will. They will. Over here <laughs> remains where he is. Um, it's quite, he carries on, he's regained another wound, so hopefully he can survive a volley. This mortal's fallen back. These immortals are just going to concentrate fire on this dreadnought and try and get rid of him. He's got two wounds, should be fine. Hopefully. <laughs> um, over here, the Technomancer got back another destroyer. Uh, so these guys are also going to benefit from cover again because of his ability and his war gear. And they're going to be re uh, adding plus one to their yes. hit rolls. Um, this Lord, Lord's Will on these, so they're re-rolling ones, and this squad have just moved up as well. And that's about all it. All that's still just one man, really. Well, he's a legend, apparently, so we're going to have to get rid of him. <laughs> Judging by this game, I'm not so sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, that's fine. Cool, so that's the end of movement. Uh, we'll now head on into your shooting phase and see what devastation the Necrons can bring. Okay, so in the shooting phase, uh, this night so I'm trying to work out what's going to be a target now. Things have changed. Decided to fire at the Eradicators, we did two wounds there. Uh, Tom played a stratagem to increase their save by one. So the Mephrit ability wouldn't really do anything to it. But, you know, we did a couple of wounds there, which is a nice thing. Um, over here, Annihilation Barge, still in combat. Did, I think, one wound, was it? On one the, wound on that. Yeah, one wound on the... Uh, oh, I saved it. Yeah. 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 Sad times. Uh, and over here, the squad of mortals opened fire on the Dreadnought, exploding the Dreadnought, which unfortunately did then kill the one immortal that survived. <laughs> yeah. So, Vengeance. sweet and roundabouts, isn't it, really? But the main thing is over here. Oh, yes. Um, so, <laughs> we had the uh, these guys here split fire. Uh, these two fired in here, took one wound off here. Four of them fired in here, taking him down to three. And then these four over here fired, doing damage to him. It was then increased here by the destroyers that also opened up and the immortals. We finally killed Helbrick off. It's a lot of fire, that. And also, I only failed <coughs> by one save, which is yeah. very frustrating. Yeah, we got through. <laughs> and um, uh, also, the Overlord here fired his uh, upgraded Tachyon Arrow in here. Nothing, roll of one. So, nothing yeah. on that one, unfortunately. So, at the end of the shooting phase, we killed Helbrick, we killed a Dreadnought, and we've done a couple of little wounds here and there. Um, we're going to move into combat now and hopefully we can change it a little bit more. So we're right back with turn three, Necron's Assault. Right, so end of combat. This squad of Scorpec destroyers charged in, minced up the remaining uh, Assault Intercessors on this objective. So Necrons have now claimed a backfield objective, which is pretty major at this point in the game. Yes. Because um, there's been a stalemate up until this point here. So yes, well done Necrons. Hopefully that's going to tip the uh, favour, but we're going to see. Um, over here as well, the battle continues. No one was able to do any damage to one another. This Annihilation Barge is just, I don't know. I'm, I'm loving these things because they're, they're still relatively tough to get rid of. For the Irritating. Points. Irritating is probably yeah. the key one. And uh, that's it. We didn't do any charges across here because, of course, this is going to be for Overwatch. Uh, <laughs> the only way Necrons can do any damage, apparently. Apparently. No, no, actually, all they need to do is get into combat with decent units and they just literally sit there. Yeah. Very powerful. Forever. Um, it's fine. <coughs> <laughs> and that's it. I'm not bitter about Helbrick. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's no, very no, bitter. It's all cool. Right, so that's the end of turn three for Necrons. Turn four movement for the Black Templars. So we have finished moving, and down here, the Vanguard veterans have moved towards the Scorpion destroyers. In the building here, the, uh, the incestors have moved to the opening to be able to fire at them as well. On top of that, I've also got these assault incestors, bolt pistols in range of them as well. And I've turned the bikes around to also lay some fire in and potentially assault if required 
um, into them because I, I, I really don't want them back here anymore. They're annoying me. <laughs> um, to the centre of the battlefield, we had the uh, Eradicators move into the ruins here. So they've got a pretty good free range of shooting over there, along with the Eradicators at the back over here. Uh, the two remaining assault units I've got, uh, looking a bit thin on the ground there, have moved towards their various locations. I have moved the Emperor's Champion around to the left there to hopefully get into that Lord at the back, because I think he'll do better he'll, he'll do better in combat against him, I suspect. Um, outside of that, in the command phase, on this side of the board, the Chaplain did get um, uh, as far as Devotion, and the, but didn't get the Listener of Hate off, sadly. So not, not brilliant, but that's it. Uh, we'll now move on into uh, the shooting phase and see if we can take out some of these destroyers. Turn four shooting, and down here we had basically all everything that could fire fired into the weakened squad of the Scorpion destroyers, and we got almost rid of them. You killed um, one. Killed one, and one is on one, one wound. wound. So fair enough, but that was a lot of firepower. The bite did split fire the multi melter up into the doom scythe, but that did nothing. Um, as we swing over here, obviously all of these were shooting at the destroyers, so not, nothing really helped there. We did fire both squads of eradicators in the end into the destroyers, because uh, I didn't want them coming back again, and they are now dead dead, uh, which was nice. Um, however, it does leave this rather large unit of, um, <laughs> uh, of immortals to get through, but we'll, we'll see what happens in a bit. Um, uh, but basically, that is pretty much all the shooting done, so we're now going to head on to the combat rounds. Turn four for the Templars, end of assault phase, and down here, as you can see, it uh, didn't go quite that well for us. Uh, we did manage to make in all the assaults in. We killed off the remaining uh, single Scorpet destroyer. However, we did nothing to the other ones. All those bikes charged in and uh, didn't manage to do any damage whatsoever. Probably should have stayed out of range shooting them, but hey-ho, uh, I was trying to get on the objective. Um, so as we move this way, uh, as you can see, the Thunder Hammer uh, Sergeant has now been uh, dispatched, sadly. Um, however, the Eradicator still remains strong in there somehow. Uh, the Emperor Champion did make it into the Lord, uh, managing to kill him fairly easily. In fact, he probably died about three times over, sadly. Um, and then onto this side, unfortunately for Dom, the uh, Barge has finally died. Ooh. So that is the end of the assault phase for turn four for Black Templars. And we'll now roll into turn four for the Necron. Right, so turn four movement. Had a night side zooming down here on the way, doing a bit of strafing run on these guys in a minute. Um, scarabs will stay where they are, they're in a bit of fret at the moment. Uh, however, these immortals have now left the objective. They're going after, they're going to put some shots into these guys over here. Hopefully they can do something. Uh, we've currently got um, the Vengeful Star ability, I think it is. So it, on a roll of a six on the wounding, it improves the AP. So hopefully they can get some AP minus two on those guys over there. Uh, Overlord did his uh, his will on this squad here and has fallen back onto this objective. Will. <laughs> the crew tech <laughs> has brought back, uh, the, sorry, the Technomancer so brought back one more immortal in that squad. So back up to 10. And he's pulled back here. This squad here just putting some, going to be putting some shots in on the Emperor's Champion there because he's a bit of a threat to be left alone now. Uh, and that is it for the movement. So let's move into yeah. shooting. See what we can do. Okay, so in turn four shooting here, we had this squad of immortals far off with the Technomancer as well going into the Emperor's Champion, taking him down to one wound. Yeah. One wound still he standing. Was lucky with the saves, to be fair. Yeah, very lucky very with the lucky. saves. <laughs> yeah, we had a couple of sixes, which yes. would have removed it down to a minus two, but the invulnerable save, uh, yeah, kicked in and he was fine. Um, he did. <laughs> over here, the squad of immortals fired off as well, killing off one of the outriders and re reducing the other one down to two wounds. Um, then the Night Side flew past and took another wound off. So this guy's still alive and kicking. A bit unfortunate. Um, so we're going to move into turn four combat for the Necrons and hopefully we can kill a couple more Templars. Right, so in the combat phase, we have the veterans here. Uh, there's no charges that went off. We tried to charge, it didn't happen. <laughs> but the veterans went first. Um, we then played the stratagem to uh, do a minus one on the, the wound roll. Yes. And it wasn't enough, unfortunately. Both the veterans tried, didn't do anything. Uh, so then I picked this unit here, and we killed off the veterans. Because we need to clear them to make sure we've got this objective. Which they do now. Which we now have this objective. Yes. Uh, the bikes then fought back, did nothing on them. Because obviously they need a six to wound on yeah. these guys now, so it's quite nice. 
Uh, over here, however, the Eradicator Sergeant did some biffing and killed <laughs> off one immortal um, and took one wound back. He's the uh, bare knuckle chap. You know? Bare knuckle guy, just uh, buffing yeah. him with his big milk. He even takes his glove off because he just he likes the feel of Necron skin. I don't know why he's taking the glove off. <laughs> keep the glove on. Um, right, and that was it. Um, yeah. No, if nothing else. Like I said we attempted to charge just to engage them. Uh, unfortunately, it's a 12 inch and it didn't work. No. Uh, surprise, surprise. So that's it. We're going to move on to Black Templars turn five. Indeed. Turn five for the Templars. It's their final turn. Uh, basically, back here, the chaplain got off um, de uh, bars of devotion, but not, de not the litany of hate for rerolls to hit, and has moved here with his outrider companion towards the scarabs. Hopefully, going to we need to kill quite a few of them. <laughs> Mate, that's, that's in a nutshell. That's what we need to do. Just keep shooting. Yeah, the Emperor Champion, who was very luckily alive from the previous turn, has managed to make it towards the, uh, the leader, the Overlord over yeah. here. And I think a duel is about to ensue. Yeah, um, not again. Not again. <laughs> and then over here we had the Eradicators come through the ruins towards uh, this this area here. They are actually probably going to look at doing uh, some shots against these immortals down here to try and at least uh, take a few of them off the objective. But it's not going to be enough either way. So uh, that's pretty much it. Nothing else can really move back here because they're all sitting on objectives, which I need. Uh, so that would actually be the end of movement for the Templars in turn five. Let's head on to shooting. Turn five shooting uh, for Templars. They fired these two, sorry, these two bikes here fired all their shots into the scarabs. We took away a base and a half. Not too bad. Hopefully the combat will go a little bit better. Uh, the Emperor's Champion did try to unload a couple of rounds into the Overlord's face, uh, managing to do nothing. Uh, and then over here... <laughs> The Eradicators fired six rounds of Melter into the Immortals over here, and I think we killed one. You did, it was really, really nasty. I mean, it, it must have, I mean, when I say killed, it probably fused in, into a, a small ball. Double, or double or Immortal. Double, <laughs> double, double. Um, and that was pretty much all the shooting I could do, unfortunately, because uh, obviously over here, everything else is locked away in combat out of my range. So, that is the end of uh, the shooting phase, and I head on into the combat phase. So, turn five, back 10 bells combat down here, ended fairly even in the combat scores. Um, we are now contesting that objective, so that is now uh, at the moment, until next round, because obviously Dom does have his final turn coming up, so we'll see how that goes. Um, moving over to this backfield here, it, I thought this was going rather well back here with the Scarabs, um, but apparently um, Scarabs are quite powerful in combat. <laughs> they actually, one of them did manage to kill the last wound of my outrider, which was very frustrating because it was contested until that point. Um, and I didn't quite kill enough. Uh, they did a, they had a good good sw swing at them, but not, not enough to, to kill all, uh, all of the bases, sadly. Um, however, in the middle here, the Emperor's Champion and the Overlord are missing, as you can see. Uh, the Emperor's Champion actually almost killed the Overlord, uh, but because he's got a damage reduction, yep. Um, it didn't. It didn't quite go to plan. One wound. One wound. Uh, and then he managed to swing back and kill me. However, I decided to use my last two command points to do uh, to fight with him uh, to the death, basically, uh, and killing him. So they killed each other, uh, but that cleared that objective at the moment. And over here, this has turned into a bit of a slugfest. I don't think it really uh, anything happened to note really apart from no. one eradicator. One eradicator and two necrons. I think mean. that's it. Yeah. So that's the end of turn five for the Black Templars. When I head on to the final turn for the Necrons, and let's see what happens. Right, so in turn five, we did all of it at once. Uh, so over here, we've killed off another bike, but we have secured this objective. He's still just out of it, unfortunately, so we did secure that, which is yes. key. Uh, over here, the night scythe that was here zoomed off over there, so unable to do anything there. due to the, um, uh, the, the twist in this mission. No, everything's out of range or engaged in combat. Uh, but however, the scarabs that were here, surprise, surprise, got butchered by the chaplain. Yeah. Um, so the chaplain is holding this back objective, but unfortunately, too little, too late. The immortals that oh, were yeah, here sorry, have know, fallen yeah. back onto this objective, so secure that. Um, the uh, Technomancer brought back one more immortal in this squad here, and this fight continued. And nobody killed anybody. No, I think we did one wound, yeah. and that was it. And that's it. So we'll be right back in a minute with the final round wrap-up.
Okay, so that is the end of the game. First of all, very good game, thank you, Dom. It was good fun. Yeah, it was indeed. Good. Uh, so, if, for those of you who are maybe not paying attention to the final score, um, it was uh, 20 to the Necrons and 13 to the Black Templars. Um, and I think it could have gone either way a couple of points in the game, but I think uh, we both agree that this bit over here yeah, was the, uh, the swingy bit. Absolutely, absolutely. I think my uh, score pick was probably my uh, mid of the match, as it were, because yeah. I think without them it would have continued, the stalemate would have continued for a long time. Um, but they, they held their own there. They, you know, there was two squads originally, they took out a squad of assault intercessors, it's got a Vanguard to get four bikes. Yeah, very hard to shift. Very hard to shift with the um, the wordy wordy uh, stretch that held out. <laughs> wordy, wordy um, and my model of the match is actually going to be my Emperor's Champion just for making it across the board and actually killing the Overlord and I think your other mini lord. Yeah, yeah, he killed the Overlord and the Lord. Yeah, yeah. so uh, I'll let him. I'll let him have that. Uh, Hellbrick was all right, but I don't think he quite made his points work. No, I think he maybe killed eight immortals in the yes, long run. Uh, the only thing he did do was soak up a lot of damage. Yes. So, which is fair enough, um, but yeah, and this was obviously an open war mission, everyone, in case you're wondering about the rules we were playing, uh, hence why I was a bit slightly different. Now, this was actually quite an enjoyable match, actually, for the type of mission. It was a bit nice refreshing from doing the usual secondaries and all that business, um, rather than, so it's just nice simply having just six objectives on the board again and playing that way. So, we'll, we'll be small games like that, hopefully. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So anyway, I think that's it. It's very late. <laughs> So, um, so this is uh, Tom from Black Tone Studio, and as, as usual, joined with Tom from Black Tone Studio. Yeah, and we will be seeing you very shortly. So, take care, everyone, and goodbye.